And I'm not gonna front. I, if you ask me, Homelander is shook. All right, you know, like the the, the first thing that when someone when Starlight is like, hey, we didn't stop this dude. What we gonna do to stop this dude? The first thing come out of Homelander's mouth is you know damage control and approval ratings and stuff like that. The last thing in Homelander's mouth was, all right, yeah, let's go, let's go stomp, stomp this guy out, something. What's going on folks this is your boy ryan and this is another episode of just my opinion with ryan and before we get into this most recent episode of the boys if this is your first time here please hit that like and subscribe button for those who've been here before i appreciate you returning let's get into the most recent episode uh in terms of um the seven tower or the headquarters whatever it's called that is uh, slowly becoming a shit show in my opinion. Um, you're definitely seeing the change of personnel to quickly take on over. Uh, Ashley is trying to flex her, you know, flex her muscles as a CEO, which of course we all know that it's Homelander who's the one in charge. But she has that title because it just sounds important. But we all know Homelander is the one running things. Um, he's clearly seems like he handpicked, personally handpicked, um, a handful of executives to help make decisions and keep approval numbers up and this and the third. And one of the things that's that's also, I guess, alarming for the regular staff at the headquarters is the Deep is now going to be head of, what is it? I think like security analytics or crime analytics, whatever that department is called. We have the Deep in control of that now. So we see things are just getting out of hand already with that. Um, so that's what's going down in terms of the Seven Tower. Homelander is running that place with an iron fist. People don't genuinely seem to like him. It's more, I'm going to rock with him out of fear. Which you can understand, being that he literally is a um, dangerous man with Superman powers. So there you have it. Um, in terms of the boys, our guys, um, things just went from bad to worse, as we saw. Um, Kamika was in, it was down bad, really down bad. They got her, they nursed her back to some type of stable condition. They're trying to um, fly back to the state so they could further have uh, Kamiko uh, get more medical attention. So we got that going on. And just that whole mission was was a bust. They didn't find a, a weapon. Well, they kind of found a weapon, but we'll, I'll explain later. They didn't find the separate BCL Red weapon that was supposed to kill um, Homelander. Um, and at least to Marvin, um, Marvin's dismay, he found out that his boy um, Butcher and Huey are taking the um, temporary V that gives them superpowers in less than 24 hours. Clearly from Marvin's st um, standpoint, he doesn't like that type of um, action at all. And you can see, like, it seems like Marvin is, is you know, slowly but surely getting more and more detached from the boys, uh, mainly because of Butcher's actions. He's, he, he does, it seems like every episode, he just does not agree with anything that Butcher has going on. So we got that. So the boys, you know, they're, they're not as down bad as they were last episode, but, you know, it, it's, it's, it's some type of progress, but overall, they're still down bad. Um, also, we, have, we definitely see that Soldier Boy has found his way to the States and being that he was in some type of time capsule for whoever knows how long, he comes back and he is just completely flabbergasted about what he's seeing. He's seeing rainbows, he's seeing same-sex couples walking up and down the streets of New York. Uh, he sees superheroes plastered all over buses such as the Homeland or the Maid. And all of that is kind of throwing him off. So, and of course, you know, he, he blows, he just immediately, you know, causes a scene when he has another burst of, you know, Ray come out of his chest, killing 19 people. And I'm not going to front. I, if you ask me, Homelander is shook, all right? You know, like the, the, the first thing that when someone, when Starlight is like, hey, we didn't stop this dude. What are we gonna do to stop this dude? The first thing come out of Homelander's mouth 
is, you know, damage control and approval ratings and stuff like that. The last thing in Homelander's mouth was, all right, yeah, let's go, let's go stomp, stomp this guy out, something. So in my, in my opinion, I think Homelander's a little shook. Um, also in other uh, storylines, um, one of our favorite couples, our favorite real couples, not the home life thing, but our favorite real couple, um, well, one of my favorite real couples, let me speak for myself, um, Huey and, and Starlight, um, Huey definitely comes clean. Is trying to be trying hard to be honest in this conversation, even if that means that Star is going to be mad. And he admits to taking the uh, temporary V, and she, you know, quickly lets him know that you don't need to do that. You know, I'm disappointed in this. And she finds out, or he does. He's not 100% clear about how uh, Moscow was a miss. So, um, as I mentioned, we have. Um, uh, Soldier Boy definitely made his presence known. Of course, this gets the attention of the boys um, after Soldier Boy's blast, of course. And now it's like, holy shit, that walking weapon of mass destruction is now in the United States. And so the boys end up find, you know, tracking down um, a former uh, seven employee or a former employee of the headquarters um, by the name of The Legend. Uh, very familiar face. His name escapes me right now, but I know I've seen him in plenty of stuff. That was a pretty dope scene. You know, they, they, he, they, they're going back in memory lane. Uh, he clearly doesn't rock. Uh, the legend clearly doesn't rock with Butcher, but he has a pretty tight relationship with Marvin. And they end up getting information out of Soldier Boy about, you know, why is he here? Did he, he you know, what did he want when he visited the legend? Definitely came back for that old school Soldier Boy suit. Um, which, of course, every time I see Soldier Boy, I can't help but to think of Captain America for obvious reasons. Same storyline, all that. But anyway, and, and so we got that going on. Um, also, another favorite couple of mine, uh, Kamiko and Frenchie. Kamiko is actually happy that she is not healing. Um, so it seems like just, like, just like Marvin, Kamiko is slowly getting tired of this game as well. And you can see why. The Butcher just wants to use it as a weapon. He made his uh, feelings well known um, a couple episodes ago about, you know, hey, you are my weapon. What I say goes, I'm the boss of this team, whatever the case. He did kind of talk to Kamiko crazy for somebody who can, you know, literally, you know, rip um, people apart. So anyway, she's happy that her powers are fading. She just seems like she wants a happy, normal life. So I'm liking that storyline because it's almost like, you know, she's had these powers since she was a kid. She never really had that childhood. And so she's definitely happy about that. She's happy that she can't lift anything heavy. And what's most surprising is that after three seasons and four episodes, in this fifth episode, Kamiko finally speaks. And they go into this cute musical number, which of course was some type of over-exaggeration or I guess just expressing how they really felt. And um, anyway, it's just a celebration to see this type of progress. Um, and so that is a beautiful thing. I'm, I'm loving how that's going. And I, I ain't gonna lie, man. I think probably the most disappointing um, character in my opinion, uh, it, it gotta be A-Train, man. A-Train out here. Um, one, you know, he's getting rewarded for, um, his loyalty towards Homelander. And because of that, he gets a meeting with Blue Hawk. Um, and Blue Hawk, you know, of, you know, of course, this is all satire and, you know, fictional and all that type of stuff. But Blue Hawk definitely is, you know, just that typical clueless, racist, you know, you know, what's the problem? What's the big deal type of mentality when he, when he meets with, um, A-Train. And that was just all, yeah, you've seen that scene. That was actually, uh, yeah, the A-Train is corny, you know? So anyway, Blue Hawk meets with A-Train and Ashley. They agree, uh, well, A-Train comes up with the, the bright idea to have Blue um, Blue Hawk come down to like the, 
community center where the African Americans are, you know, in that neighborhood, and give an apology, which was, of course, one of the, you know, definitely a, a fake going through the most of the apology, reading word for word. All right. To uh, the residents of Trenton, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today, as you know. And, you know, officers that just throw $10,000 at the community center. And of course, people are more outraged with the killing of unarmed black men that he's, uh, that he's responsible for. I'm donating ten thousand dollars to this community center. Thank you. What about what you did to Raymond Tucker? Yeah. 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 Well, he, he he was a criminal. He was unarmed. Could he have done the same thing to a white guy in Mill Hill? Yeah. I, I go where the crime is, and the crime just happens to be in, in black neighborhoods. That, that's not my fault. All right, all right, you know, yeah, that's enough. Yeah, we're done here. Just say you're sorry, and we can get out of here. Yeah. You know what? Do your research. Like blacks commit a disproportionate number of murders. How about all the black Humor. How about you tell me why they were so fucking aggressive? I was acting in self-defense. They don't. Black lives matter. Fuck you. Walk away. Walk away. All lives matter. All lives matter. Black lives matter. Soup lives matter. Soup lives matter. Soup lives matter. You fucking eat great stuff. Shut them. You know, they're outraged with him over policing the black communities. And that just goes. That's just yet another shit show. So yeah, uh, and because of A-Train's bright idea, um, I think that's his uh, brother or friend, he ends up getting paralyzed and things just goes to shit. And, um, and still, of course, no, you know, no consequences for Blue Hawk, um, even after this outburst and causing someone to be paralyzed. So yeah. Um, once again, the actor who plays a train, everyone is, is, you know, doing the damn thing. Everyone is great. But of course, we're just talking about the fictional actors. a train probably has to be a very close second on that list of unlikable characters. Um, so, yeah. So I'm happy to see that part. Um, oh, yeah. We also definitely have, um, which I didn't have on my bingo card. We have... The Butch and Maeve um, making out when the Butch goes back for more temporary V since they ran out. And once again, uh, thanks to the negative uh, peer pressure from um, Butcher, we now have Maeve who was off the wagon again after after, after being sober from alcohol for four months. After the alcohol's talking, they start getting it on. Once again, something that I never you know saw coming. So um, I read a funny uh, tweet. Someone was trying to say, oh, snap. We have, first we got home late. Now we have um, the Butch Queen or Queen Butcher or the Butcher Queen. Just, I forget what the uh, hashtag was. Oh yeah, speaking of Maeve, now um, thanks to the working of uh, Black Noir, um, the Ma Maeve is now missing. You know, of course, uh, Maeve and Homelander had that, you know, honest conversation between the two where, you know, Maeve let, let them know up front, I never liked you. I, matter of fact, I pitied you, if anything. And you saw how that dialogue went. And before you know it, Black Noir sneaks up on Maeve and she's gone somewhere. I'm assuming she's not dead just yet. Hopefully she doesn't die because um, she seems like one of the key uh, factors when it comes to trying to take the uh, homeland down. And also, Hell, for what for what is worth, she's she's a pusher for uh, when it comes to that temporary V. She's a pusher for Butcher and, and Huey. She's giving them. She's the supplier for them. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so that that's just going to shit, and that has Starlight like worried to the point to where you know she was trying to pull it out of uh, Ashley, but Ashley wouldn't give up. Ashley would not snitch and have Homeland to come after her. You know, as far as trying to find out the you know the the whereabouts of, of Maeve. Of course, the end of the episode, uh, which was hilarious, by the way. They all, it seems like that seems to be their calling card. They're definitely always gonna give you some type of funny, sex-related scene. You know, we got, you know, uh, we got Kamiko killing people with dildos a couple episodes ago. We have the fake Ant-Man blowing somebody up after he was exploring inside of somebody's rectum. In this episode, we have uh, the 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 well known Seth Rogen on like some you know webcam call ready to you know 
Spank That Monkey to um, the older uh, Crimson, huh, what is her name? Crimson Countess. And that was just hilarious. She has the Ben Wall balls out. She's ready to go to town, ready to do her cam show for, for little old Seth Rogen. And um, of course, the boys come through to interrupt and they actually, you know, contain uh, Countess as almost like a, a peace offering or even like a, a, a weird roundabout sacrifice for Soldier Boy after they found out that they know where, um, after they got the information from the legend that more than likely Soldier Boy is going to pay Crimson Countess a visit. So they definitely um, already had her Crimson Countess wrapped up with a bow on top just for Soldier Boy to end up killing. So we see like this weird friendship um, forming, at least between Butcher, Huey, and I'm sure that they're hopeful that the um, Soldier Boy will fall in line and, and, and team up with them in order to get rid of Homelander. So that's where that storyline is going. Um, and I'm kind of torn. It's like, you know, you clearly see and can understand why Marvin is upset. Why Marvin just wants to take the Soldier Boy out, which unfortunately, Soldier Boy seems so powerful. I, I don't see how the boys um, in their regular form could take them out. And you know what? And that is one thing I am happy to see, at least in this season, because I, I always did wonder, like, how in the world did we go three seasons or get into the get into three seasons without any of the um, members of the boys dying because they they don't have special powers yet they were able to you know in some form or fashion go against some of these guys from the seven and, and other super supers whether they're a villain or not and and none of them die so i'm at least happy to see that okay you know what let's finally write a storyline to where these guys have to take some type of superpower drug in order just to simply keep up um this has been another episode of just my opinion um i can't wait to see what's going to happen next um i ain't gonna lie man i don't even have a prediction of what's gonna happen next um but once again it's not a prediction but i do think homelander is shook he definitely sees the writing on the wall in terms of this soldier boy character and i don't think homelander really wants a piece of what or what's going down with that um, once again, I know that's not the hottest of takes, but as I say, love it or hate it, these are just my opinions. Peace.